Hey yo, what is going on guys and welcome back to a new video on my channel. I hope you're all doing well. And this is another league racing highlight video. We are here in Qatar for the first time ever, at least for me. Um, and it's a cool track, I like it a lot. But let's just quickly cover something off. This is Q1, this is my first run in Q1. And you will see why. This is my actual first, actual, actual first run in Q1. Because we haven't practiced Q1, Q2, only Q3. And I did one and a half race laps on mediums. As a preparation leading up to this. And it all started on race day. So I had maybe a productive six hours of driving. That's pretty much it. Ready for the session or not. <laughs> Because we came back from Belgium, like I came back very late because of the delay of the train, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and then slept long because it was a long weekend. And from there on, I went to Bochum, which is a city um, basically at the other end of Germany for me, four hour drive. Then it was an event from Sony for the new Gran Turismo, uh, Gran Turismo movie, actually amazing. So thank you for Sony Germany for inviting me there. Really enjoyed it. And then I went back home and arrived at 3 a.m. or 3.30 a.m. So also a similar day. Also then sleeping until midday. Going to the gym later on. Afterwards getting some food. Oh, whilst yeah, being yeah. at a friend's place. We went back home and decided to at least go and rest early. Which turned into no practice anymore because then I wanted to practice early in the next day and then it was Wednesday so the earliest I could practice was Wednesday and here we are so first lap was a mess second lap I changed the setup to something a bit more stable and you could already see I gained a little bit more confidence by doing that it was looking quite neat through first two corners nothing too special but um, we were four times off and we had quite a bit of time to find so this is already looking much better, especially here. Gained quite a bit of time. Then in the hairpin, missing the apex slightly, but it's not too bad. It's all about carrying momentum, getting the rotation. So we're good through here. Then in this section, we had another moment on the exit, which lost us up to a tenth, I would say. In this corner, we turned in way too early. You should never hit the inside there, and we still gained time. So that explains to you how slow the lap from before was. And we still had a somewhat alright split considering all of this. So we were probably going for a point three low or point two high. And now heading into this corner, a very tricky one, and we get a bit loose on ah. the curb and with that I knew it's it's done. Ah, I mean fuck. invalid. GG's. So oh. we were out of Q1. Of course I didn't that want this bad. to happen. It was like, we could have went through Q2 and probably also into yeah, Q3, I mean, but it honest, is what it is. Yano we, also, Jake we also, and if Bari would have like been that, crashed out, then Dani would have <laughs> possibly like also been out. So, we probably by all of us. This is the Q2 result and Q3 is also coming these up. Guys are gonna do in Q3. Also <laughs> my, like, I don't want to watch these guys. I want to be in Q3 as well. Lucas gets pole and he even made a big mistake. So, uh, yeah, okay. Shout out yeah, to him. Yeah, great, great stuff. Um, great pace from spiel? the McLaren driver. And at the beginning of my race, for some reason, OBS didn't show my F1 game, so I had to click stuff. And with that, I, I didn't manage to get the perfect start. It was not ideal. I can't lie. We still overtook Philippe and um, stayed ahead of Bari. So we gained one position, which is not too bad. And then here, there's a bit of chaos and a great reaction from me upcoming right here. Oh. And I'm getting punished for it. I'm getting an illegal overtake on my teammate what? Jano. And now I have to slow down and, and let Jano and Bari go because yeah, Bari is ahead. Is and this and illegal, yeah, money. with that, we're basically back down to last. If Philippe wouldn't have had game. a bad start, we would have been last place right now. Which is unreal. We had P19. We had a good start. We went up into P17. We would have probably been up He's to P15 or 14. Because Jano right now is P18, 17. Yeah, I would have been P16 and probably overtaken Simon. So I would have been P16 or 15. And with Jake knowing that he's on soft, we would catch him later on in the stint. We could maybe benefit from him as well fighting. There's Tomek. We could have maybe. You can see the chaos there. And all of this 
costs you so much in this whole train kind of esports driving that we are dealing with every single weekend. So a very unfortunate start and I don't know what to do guys. I think in every race there's something going against me. Something. I don't even feel like I'm making a mistake. Like, can you tell me what to do there? Should I crash into Yano? Should I take Yano out even more? Or should I try and avoid him? Like, why are we racing with this overtake thingy? With this illegal overtake? You can put it to corner cutting only. I know you can speed into the pits, but just make it mandatory that everyone has to deliver a clip of the pit entrance. It's not that hard. We are all on PCs. We all can have shadow play or um, whatever you can use. Like OBS replay buffer is the same thing. You can run it in the background. You can record your whole race. You can stream it. Whatever, I don't care. Just make it mandatory that you can see if you sped or not. And make it mandatory that everyone has to deliver this. So, we could never get an illegal overtake again. There were like two or three races this season where I had to back out. Because it happens to me in the first stint, for some stupid reason of avoiding cars, or getting pushed off. And then, oh. you're sitting there, basically. Yep. having to back out because you would have to serve it in the pits. If it would have happened after the pits, it would have been fine. I would have just literally showed the stewards, well, this happened, couldn't avoid it, remove my pen, all good. But with this, I did suffer the whole race. Like, my whole race was compromised just by this one incident. That's, yeah, frustrating. But what can, you, what can we do? I hope PSGL does something about it and maybe listens to my complaints because this is ridiculous. It's actually getting to a point where it's just so annoying. Yeah. Well. Anyways. We have Jake ahead of us. We need to pass him. He's also not going to fight us hard. Because he's on softs and we are on a different strategy. His tires are basically dead. So he's also not fighting here with the ERS. He's in the slipstream of course. But getting passed. So thank you very much Jake for not fighting us here mm. and so we're back into p17 where we were after the start <laughs> and now we're trying to make some progress i'm sweating like a pig man i mean the drivers in the and front are fighting i think janus fighting fabrizio and fabrizio has to defend quite a bit now and after that uh, fabrizio also has to defend against bari so he's using a lot of his battery and i was just sitting there like enjoying this because i knew if he has to fight these cars I'm just chilling at the back, not using my ERS. He will think, okay, I can't spend another car. And we will be close enough. Like, right now, it's quite a big gap to him. But, you know, there's no concern. We're going to catch her. You can see, we basically lost no time at all. And we didn't use ERS. So, it was just chilling. And now, at the end, we used a little bit more just to be close here. Also, getting a good final corner. And with that... We are in the mix, we can fight for Britain on the straight using ERS and you can see exactly what I predicted. He's not using any ERS because he knows he can't use much more. He defended against Yano, he defended against Bari and uh, if he defends against us he's probably down to 30% ERS. And at this point we were being told in lap 13 leading up to lap 14 opposite to Yano. I didn't really know what Yano was gonna do so we just pitted at lap 15 and it was actually maybe the worst pit lap that you can come in because it was not super early so we didn't get a massive undercut and it was not super late so we could get a big benefit of the tires and lap 17 we're catching up back to jake um getting the drs but we have patrick seaports the alpine driver ahead with wing damage holding us up whilst his teammate is coming in this lap so he, his teammate is benefiting from this big time luke smith and uh, you can see in this section where it's basically flat out and just with a little bit of lifting or small taps on the brakes. We are having to slow down so much, especially in the next corner where you actually need to brake. And he's slowing down so much that we, we lose a lot of time. You can see the Alpine is in the pits. Now Patrick Sipos is also pitting. Probably retiring. And uh, we are passing Jake. There's no real point in us using a lot of ERS. And um, yeah, so even with ERS usage, we would have been side by side with Luke Smith, maybe a little bit further behind. It would have been hard to make the move stick, but really hard to predict. And Deepos did his job. 
can't blame him. <laughs> Good stuff for his teammate. And with that, yeah. Another position kind of lost. Bari behind on much fresher tires. Now going for a move here. And I'm not going to fight him much because at the beginning we were in a fight. Now I would have either needed to have a massive undercut or hit the same lap as him to fight him. But this is pretty much pointless. Just going to lose myself time. Tomek, same scenario. I didn't even get the DRS from Bari because I was more focusing on the ERS and what Tomek is doing. It was a mistake from my end. So Tomek could get passed easily. He would have probably passed me anyways. Now Jano is behind, but I couldn't slow down more here. I could have maybe let him pass, but then I would have sacrificed my own pace too much. And so Jano is going to try and pass me into the next corner. I don't think this is the smartest way how we did it here. Lost us probably a bit more time, but in the end, it didn't matter too much. Um, I had to back out quite a bit. And there's Chaos ahead again. So uh, Wilson and Tommy, they were having a great fight. And I think this is the oh only only spot where I was really lucky in this race. Because with this fight, I could gain a position on Wilson. And um, Wilson pitted a lap after us. Um, so he had a bit fresher tires. And because I saw him flashing already, we could get the move done here. And we were ahead of Wilson. So now our task is just to stay ahead. Because all of the drivers ahead have fresher tires. And we need to do something about it. So, just holding on to it, holding on to the ERS. Wilson actually recovered fairly decently. Um, and so now it's just trying to survive. Anyways, this race was not amazing. You can see there's still a few penalties going to play into it. But I think it was an alright recovery considering the circumstances. Next time we're just going to practice more. This time it was not really possible. And uh, I still hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. And it's currently 1am. So I'm trying to get this live as soon as possible. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will leave you with the post-race reactions. See you soon, guys. Much love. You, Marcel. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. No. There were penalties ahead or what? I guess still alright recovery. A bit more luck and it would have been points. This guys, I'm sweating like crazy. It's literally 30 or more degrees in my room. It's so warm. This is insane. I can't breathe, man. Like, this is... You can see it even on my chest. This is all sweat, man. This is crazy.